All right, so in this one, all we're gonna do is add a checkout button that's gonna take us to a new page. It's gonna be a blank page, but it's gonna take us to a new page and essentially turn our cart into an order. It's fairly straightforward on what we do, but I'm gonna open up views inside of orders. Um, you could put this in cart too, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep checkout uh, and orders all being together in one. So checkout, the actual checkout process is gonna be now part of orders versus part of cart. Because uh, you could put it in either one, but I just want to put it in the views for uh, the orders because this is where we actually are initializing that first order. So we're actually creating that first order as soon as they hit checkout. You could create the order earlier than that, um, but it's going to be it's, it will be kind of up to you. And what we do here will show you how you would be able to do that. Um, so you could put this view inside of your view cart even if you want to do that. And I encourage you to experiment. All right, so now uh, I'm going to create the view and I'm going to call it checkout and it's going to take in a request and it's going to return render request template and context, just like what we've seen before. And so I'll make context for now being an empty dictionary and template. I will just call it home.html. I'm just gonna use a template that we already have. Uh, actually, let's see, it would be under products slash home. So products only using this template for now, just so we have some placeholder type template. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get the cart um, ID itself. So if you remember, it's in the session. Uh, so if we look in our views for our cart, we see the cart ID is here. So this is what we can actually copy that specifically and then back into our other view, we can paste it. So this is what's nice about sessions is you can change them through with views without doing a whole lot. All right, so now that we have this cart ID from here, we would wanna get the cart itself, the cart object itself. Um, so what I'll do is I'll actually import the cart object. So from carts.models import cart and within this same try I'm going to actually put the cart object in here so basically what it's going to do it's going to try and get the ID and then in that same block it's going to try and get that cart that's related to that ID if it doesn't have it we'll we'll do a redirect so then I'll just say cart equals to cart dot objects dot get and ID equals to the ID and then if it's not there, so except if there's an exception, so if, if cart does not exist, then it's gonna be this. So this is this would be pretty much the only exception that will probably be raised. There might be an exception with the session ID not being there, so we'll just leave it as except as a general catch-all if the ID's not there or the cart's not there. Um, so if that's the case, then we will just do a redirect. So I have to import in shortcuts, HTTP response redirect. So when any request comes through, a response has to come back, an HTTP response has to come back. And all HTTP response redirect does is it redirects it to any kind of page that we specify. So we can do return redirect, and I'm gonna wanna redirect it to the cart itself um, and I'm going to import uh, the, so first I'm gonna import the URL resolver for reverse, and then I'm gonna actually set the name for that as well. So we'll actually see what that does in just a second here. So it's from Django.core import, sorry, .core .url resolvers import reverse. So what this is gonna allow us to do is use the URL name instead of hard coding a URL itself. So in our URLs here, we can use one of these names. So for us, it's gonna be cart. So I'm just gonna copy cart, go back into my view, and then just do reverse cart. So this of course assumes that there's a URL that's named cart, otherwise it will raise an error. Uh, but this will basically say if the cart ID does not exist, it's going to return back to the cart. And that's it. So let's actually see what that does. Um, so I'm going to leave it as is, but all I'm going to do is actually remove this and paste it on top. 
uh, for now so we can actually see that in action. All right, so what we'll have to do is go in our view for cart um, and then actually more specifically, we'll have to go into our template for that cart, so cart view. And then at the very bottom, I'm gonna put it underneath the table. We'll worry about styling later, uh, but I'll just do a href equals to, well, we don't have a link for it yet, so we'll have to come back to that too. And I'll just call it checkout. So let's go ahead and add the URL here. So I'll just call it URL checkout because that's what we'll end up calling it as far as the name goes. Uh, so that's our link. So since we see this, we actually have to create the URL for it. Uh, which we can copy the cart for the most part. It's basically the same thing. Uh, and then we will just do checkout. And this is orders.views.checkout and checkout. So orders is the app that we are working in, right? So this is orders checkout right here. And we added the view of checkout, which is that. And then we added that name of checkout, which allows this to work. All right, so let's run our server. That's already running. And let's go to our cart. And what we see here is this button checkout and notice the link will take us to checkout. Uh, but it actually doesn't take us anywhere. And that's because it is just has a redirect loop basically because of how we ran that, that um, the reverse direct, reverse direct, uh, HTTP response reverse. So let's actually change it to home so we can see it in action. All right, and refresh, click on checkout, takes us home. So that's what the redirect does, and it's also using reverse. It's very nice. So uh, you can, like I said, put a full-on uh, link here. So if you wanted a URL or like a absolute uh, link, you could do cart like that, or you could even do, um, you know, Google dot com well you would want to do http slash slash google.com slash cart you could even do that um, so that would work as well but the downside to using just slash cart is that if you ever change the url um, to where your cart exists then you're going to have a lot of breaks in your code so this is um, a lot cleaner and it will save you a lot of headache down the line so we'll keep that all right so now we have that part working we actually need to do something with this cart. So let's actually print out to see that we have a cart coming through. And I'll just do print cart, just so we can see that it's actually accepting the cart and we can see it. All right, so let's click on cart, go to checkout. Now it's a blank page as we should expect because the context is empty, empty and the product's home page is empty without context. Uh, and then we also see, hey look, cart ID is four. So it printed out card ID being four. So if I refresh again, we see it's printing out that card ID. Perfect, so that is pretty much all we really need to get the, the order actually started, right? So what we'll do now is we'll import the order. So from dot models, import order. And then we'll do outside of the try and accept block, we'll do new order created equals to order dot objects dot get or create cart equals to cart and of course this is referencing the field this is referencing this right here so if you called this abc this would have to be abc okay and i'm going to get rid of this print so what's going on here it's either going to get the model that's related to the cart and order or it's going to create it and if it creates it we want to maybe change the status or update the status or something like that. And then we also would eventually want to create um, just some order ID. And all I'm going to do is just add some time. So import time. I'll just put time in it as our ID for now. So if, I'll do if created new order dot order ID equals to string of time dot time and that's just setting the time as it is right now and then we have to save that so new order dot save okay so this created the order it started the order now there's a few things that we might want to consider here 
is when do we actually get rid of this cart? Like when do we deactivate it or at least remove the cart ID session? Uh, well, I would want to do it after a successful order is finished. So if the order is done, then we want to remove the request session. So to do that, um, all I'm going to do is on the checkout page is I'll do if we will change this later, but if new order dot status equals to finished. So let's equals equals to finish. So this this right here would be listed. It's this right here. Okay. So if the new order status of the new order is finished, then we will delete request dot session cart ID. Okay, so that's going to do a few things for us. And we're going to manually do this in just a second, or, uh, manually change it, that is, uh, after we actually check to see that the order is created. All right, so now we save this. And I'm going to go back to my home page. Click on cart, go to checkout. All right, nothing happened uh, because nothing should have happened or we shouldn't have noticed anything happen, I should say. And then let's actually make sure something happened by going to the admin, click on orders, and there we go, we've got this order. So notice that random number is based off of the time. Now this is okay for now, we're not gonna use this long term, but that is a random number. Um, and that gives us a random order ID. We have this cart being four, and then we have status being started. So let's change it to finished. I'll hit save. And now I'm gonna to go to checkout. Checkout's there. And if I go back to cart, it says your cart is empty. Please keep shopping. Hmm. Well, why did that happen? And of course it happened because we deleted the session. We deleted the cart ID from session, which basically means the cart is empty now, uh, which this should also delete the number of items in the cart. So let's actually go and look at our views for that, uh, for the cart. So let's open that up. And we're just gonna grab this here, items total. And we would also wanna delete that as well. Okay, so let's save that. And all we really need to do is go to our checkout again. Well, we'll actually have to add some products in here. And hit, click on checkout. Checkout's there. So we go back into admin. So what, all I'm doing right now is simulating that it's finishing. And I click on that most recent one, call it finished. Notice card ID is five, there's a new time on it. Hit save, they are different. I, they are actually different even though it's just a timestamp so it's very similar because uh, it's not a whole lot different in time. And if we go back into our cart, check out. Now it actually changes everything. Notice cart went to zero and the cart's empty now. If I click on cart, it is empty. Uh, so we could do one more thing, and that would be just when we when it says finish, we just re make it go back to the cart. All right, so let's try that one real quick. Go on to our home page here, click on product, add a cart, check out, go into the admin. Right now we're simulating the credit card process happening simulating it it's done they were successful i'm going to go into checkout and it jumps you right back into the cart and it says your cart is empty please keep shopping cart is zero perfect so this is good for um the starting of all this and this allows us also to see uh, all the carts that were ever added into uh ever made right they're not actually we're not actually deleting the cart itself uh from the database if you wanted to delete the cart, if you expect a lot of people coming through and you just don't think that information is relevant or needed to save, you would just do cart.delete when the order is actually finished. Uh, so what we need to do still is we need to, first off under if created, we need to assign a user to the order, All right? So that means we still need to create the user. Uh, and then we'll also need to assign an address to the order, right? And then we'll actually need to run credit card as well. So those are still kind of big topics to go over. 
Uh, but what we've seen so far is at least the ability to see all of our orders come through and actually work. I can go in here, add it to the cart. I can remove it from the cart, of course, go back into, uh, uh, we'll have to change that product page as well. Uh, add a product, add a few products, and go to checkout. And then inside of admin, we can change it to finished. Done. So that works. Now, there's a few things that you might wanna think about here, is your order might have a different total, like you might actually have tax and subtotal and all that stuff within the order itself, or you might assign that to the cart. Now, if you assign it to the cart, that's okay. You just have to know where you're gonna put it, um, and then when we reference it later, we would wanna do that. Now, I think actually, I'm gonna make a note of it for us, is we actually wanna add subtotal tax and final price. I'm gonna actually add that into the order in future videos and I'm just making a note of it now. Um, so so that we have it all in one, and we don't need to reference a whole lot of things and, and add more work to us. So instead, what we'll do is when we actually do the order, we'll add that total in there and all that too. Uh, where the total might change though. So like if they left the checkout and added something new, then we would actually have to change that total uh, outside of this if created, right? And we would also probably wanna uh, uh, take off the assign address because they might change their address. So we might not put a lot of stuff in the created part exactly. We might even assign the user outside of it as well. Um, all right, so that's it for now and uh, we will see you in the next one.